Hello again and welcome back to my layout Woodhill Park. In my last update I did mention that I fancied electrifying my two top loops and adding catenary and that's what I've been doing. I've made a start, I've started building scale model scenery catenary and uh, I bought some Dapol single uh, girders and uh, overheads I suppose you call them and uh, I've been having a job talking to camera as well I've had no end of sort of takes of this and uh, at the end I put a few outtakes as I keep getting a certain word wrong and messing it all up hopefully I don't mess this one up anyway I'll carry on and say that on my community page I did mention that I was working on another project I've been keeping it a bit hush hush just in case it didn't turn out very well really but the results have been pretty good so I thought I would feature it in this update and you can tell me what you think it was just uh, a little project that was to do with the subject really I've been adjusting the pantographs on my uh, trains and uh, the class 90 as it's got a, a solenoid that uh, puts the pantograph up and down I've had to look into how to adjust the height of that and that was fun trying to find the information but uh, I did find information in the end and uh, I'll feature it in this in case any of you are struggling as well so I'll show you how I did that also you'll notice some of my stock has been weathered so I had a, a mammoth weathering session and uh, quite a lot more looks realistic and uh, the, especially the HAA merry-go-round wagons they have uh, all been weathered though they look a lot better and uh, anything else I can think of before I cock this one up no so we'll just get on with the film I've been weathering a lot of my stock as you've probably seen in this update so far and uh, this is another loco that I've not long had and uh, strangely I did actually get this off that auction site and I managed to get it for quite a decent price and it's a fairly up to date loco, it's a class 87 in it is intercity swallow livery and I managed to get this for I think it was about 85 pound as the pantograph was damaged and somebody glued it in place rather badly um, I've re sort of touched that up and glued, glued it a bit better but I need to sort of add some paint to it um, I'm not worried about the pantograph being set at a certain height as long as it's a realistic height and uh, there was a bit of glue here and there which I cleaned up and I've now weathered weathered it and it uh, 
is a welcome addition to my fleet. As I've said in the past, I'm now going to start thinking about electrifying some of my my layout, or portraying some of it to be electrified, as I'm not going to put all the wires in place, just the gantries. But yeah, I've been weathering this and some coaches that I already had to go with it and many other items I've been weathering as I had a sort of mega weather session you might say another loco that I weathered very lightly and I may enhance in the future was my class 91 that I not long bought and this was a nice little uh, bargain I bought, uh, bought in the sales after Christmas as I mentioned in previous updates and I've just given it a basic weathering just to take that plastic look away from it. The male sector coaches I've also used sleeper grind which was uh, what I was trying to think of for the class 91 on the under frame and a little bit more up the sides as well as roof dirt as well just to give them a little more of a, a grubbier look as the male coaches were often quite filthy and as you know I also weathered my uh, merry-go-round wagons my HAAs I've not long purchased and also put coal loads in them and I think they've come out pretty good I've still got other modifications I want to do to them you know mainly the couplings and whatever but they now look the part as a nice rake with the class 58 the class 58 has been weathered as well and uh, I've not overdone it but just given her a look the look of a little bit more of a grimy in surface service uh, loco and uh, plenty of sleeper grime on the under frame and a little bit creeping up the body as well as roof dirt on top and I think it's enhanced the loco without making it look like it's plastered in dirt so looking like she's been in service for a while I've also weathered my pilchard wagons Dapole pilchards I bought a while back which had rather garish yellow Dutch livery and that's been toned down with the airbrush and uh, that's given more of an enhanced in-service look so I'm pretty pleased with them they've come out really well and they they look good in this rake of mixed traffic really
I decided to make this train as as well as there not being anything on the market I just thought I'm going to electrify my layout but I would like to portray it being electrified as I said in the past it's like telling a story really how things are done and it makes you think a bit more detailed about the railway network you know as what went on and uh, you know you can include it in your modeling so I set to instead of, sort of kit bashing I did coach bashing and uh, I didn't record it on video because I weren't sure if it was going to be a success but I did take some photos and there's some photos of it in various stages but uh, yeah I didn't film it and I didn't have a lot of confidence in it coming out that well it's a bit of interpretation of a, a real picture that I've been working to it's by no means exact but it is close to the real train that was used in the early 80s and I've got a picture what I can't show you for copyright reasons but it's got a class 31 rail freight pull in it and it looks somewhat similar to what you're looking at and this was used to electrify the lines in the 1980s and I think 70s and it's in this rather sort of drab livery of uh, sort of a chocolate olive I think it's possibly olive but mine's more of a chocolate sort of brown <coughs> excuse me it's got a flat roof to allow the guys to walk up and down and uh, they can work on the overhead lines quite comfortably from that that perspective I did notice on the real train there's lights along the roof so I suppose they could work in dimly lit areas and as the sun was going down they could still carry on for a certain length of time as a, I'm sure it wouldn't be bright enough to uh, work under through the night but uh, I'm sure they would have had spotlights and whatever I've depicted the pantograph on it if I zoom in rather than out there's a pantograph on it and I think it was used just to get the height of the cabling right even though it, it may have served to power it up with the guys being careful obviously when it was powered up but I reckon it was just to set the height and get the cabling correct over the top of the pantograph and as the the cabling was set so it did a zigzag across the pantographs they would have had to check where the cabling was on the insulators to adjust between gantries so it would do a zigzag pattern as the train passed as not to wear the pantograph out so I'm sure this would have been used just to set it up if I'm wrong I'm sure there'd be somebody who'd tell me what I've got wrong and uh, there's a lot I don't know about it so I'm sure somebody will tell me and it would be quite interesting to find out the truth of how it was used really but as far as I can tell at the moment without reading loads and loads of books I think it was just used to judge the placement of the wiring or the overhead wiring <coughs> I've made sort of a, a bit of a stab at the sort of auxiliary vehicle with the cable drums on that would have fed the cable out and uh, it's a bit of my interpretation more than totally realistic but I think it does the job 
and creates the atmosphere of the line being electrified. The drums for the cables are just round bits of plastic cars that I had spare and the copper windings there are just old scrap coils that uh, I had in all my junk and they work out quite well for the cabling and the, the fencing on the side is a bit of cut up mesh really and uh, serves as a ham rail either side which is not bad I thought about you know the cables would have been held under some sort of tension so I went to work making a little trestle up at one end just to hold the wires straight but uh, how they would have done that I'm not sure as I haven't seen a close-up picture of this sort of wagon only from a distance but I'm sure that they would have had a method of holding it taut and possibly the way I've got the train round at the moment just to show you is the wrong way round as I think uh, the train would have been at this end or the loco would have been at this end and maybe the coils of wire or cable would have been at the other end of the train but I've just done this as it's convenient to show you all the items I've worked on close together like this and I can get them in one shot but I think it, this uh, cable drum utility vehicle as such would have been on the other end of the train and the loco would have been where, where it's sitting at the moment I think that's how it's in the picture that uh, I've been studying anyway the transfers I've used are from Railtech I'm not sure if they're totally correct but they were sort of labelled up as a transfer set for electrification so I've added them here and there on the train including carriage numbers and just other sort of bits and pieces transfers and also signage really which is pretty much my interpretation as well but as I say the transfers were supposedly authentic transfers for possibly carriages like this I'm not sure but I don't know if you can get the exact transfers anyway the real carriages seem to have white lines going down them sort of or white sort of small white lines at the bottom of the carriages every so often which I could depict later on maybe but I'm quite happy at the moment the way it is it's probably a bit of poetic license because I don't know whether they would have done something like this but I did add a label to the side to uh, show what maintenance shed it came from and it comes from the local maintenance shed behind on my layout Brimston Hill so just a little sign on the side I'm sure they know where they come from but just in case they got a big sign telling them the roofs I constructed with plastic card and removed and didn't use the original roofs even though I was thinking of adding a roof on top of the original roofs but that didn't work out it seemed to be more efficient to actually make a whole new roof so that's what I did 
and I extended the roof a little bit on this one just so the guys haven't got such a big gap to you know jump across um, I think there might have been sort of steel plates laid across and stuff like that you know just to aid them moving up and down I'll now move on to the electrification I've been doing on the two loops on the upper level of my layout and how I've been constructing them with uh, these gantries and wire and uh, other sort of bits and pieces uh, to interpret the, uh, the ceramic insulators and stuff but there is no wire I'm not putting wire along it as it will just stop me accessing the track easily so you're going to have to imagine the right wires going around the layout I bought some Daypole single uh, gantries as well so I shall be adding those but this is how I got on making them previous to uh, building this train Another thing I've been up to is putting some of these gantries together for the catenary that I'm starting to put on the layout and uh, so far I'm, I'm finding them to be quite a good kit. They're not cheap, they're reasonably expensive but uh, after my first one I think they're, they're not bad value. But, uh, I'll have a go at making one on camera I think and uh, you can see for yourself whether you think they go together easy or not and I'll show you the result afterwards I still need to work out how I'm going to put some arms and uh, insulators and such just coming down from the gantry as they're not supplied with these kits and I'm thinking I could make something up myself anyway so it'll be a case of looking around at junk again and see what I can come up with.
and in great Blue Peter fashion here's one I did earlier and uh, I've spray sprayed it in Halfords primer and just weathered it a bit with some sort of brown rust uh, I may weather it a bit more as it still looks a bit too pristine they look scruffier than this normally and uh, I think it's pretty good and um, got to do make up some arms and insulators for it but that's as far as I'm going to go as you can see the standard one that you can make up goes across three roads and the other side of my layer I've only got a twin track so I'm thinking of reducing the size as uh, there's not enough room anyway to take a full span and um, I'm going to experiment and see how that comes out but for here a standard one is fine yeah as I was saying this side I've only got a double track so I'm going to have to reduce the gantries and I'll see how I can uh, cut them down really see if it looks right and it's going to be an experiment but I do want to keep them in, within the boundaries of the retaining wall and probably the back fence as well now to make the registration arms that come down from the gantry I'm going to make my own interpretation on which is 22 gauge tin copper wire and these turret terminals they're called from years ago that you used to use with Veriboard and uh, they've got little flanges down them so I think that's going to sort of represent sort of the ceramics five minute epoxy as you see me doing then and uh, 
they normally would have brackets in the real thing clamping them to the uh, the gantry but in this case I haven't got any miniature brackets so I'm using an epoxy glue just a blob top and bottom of the pole and uh, just leave it to dry now just get an even height and even distance across the tracks and leave it to dry just going to go walk about for a moment and uh, so the camera's going to be a little bit jittery but this is the one which I've just done if I go up against the brown background you can see them hanging down they may need a bit of adjustment and they obviously need painting and weathering but they're just sitting here drying and over the other side of the layout over here I've got one in place that I did earlier and you with a bit of care with the camera you can just about see the registration arms hanging down I zoom in I've also been adjusting the pantographs on the two electric trains I've got so they don't hit the register arms the 87 in the foreground I just re-glued as the pantograph was damaged when I bought it so I just re-glued it at a better height and did a better job and uh, the class 90 I had to look up the CV to adjust the solenoid on this which I did and it took some time to do but I found it in the end and it's CV 368 and its normal value is 47 but I adjusted it to 40 as you see it's just going un underneath the register arm at the moment and it's a bit lower than probably necessary but I don't want it to hit anything as it's very delicate and it, it used to get very close to tunnel tunnel mouse as well so I want it a lot lower just in case but yeah the CV is 368 and it's a starting value of 47 can go up to 63 and as I say I adjusted mine to 40 but probably could go to 41 or 42 just to be safe I'll put the CV up on, on the screen so uh, anybody having trouble adjusting this can see the values as well as I said previously I've got this panel lamp and I'm going to start utilising this more for filming and uh, hopefully it, it won't uh, interfere with the, the microphone and the sound of the camera so far in early experiments it's looking quite good you've got uh, controls over sort of warm LEDs and sort of cool LEDs and you can mix it up and give it a, a warmer or a colder feel to the actual light that you're projecting on the layout so this should give some interesting effects when I shine the light on different parts of the layout if I switch it on it uh, has the ability to come on with a white cool LED and then you can add a, a warm LED to it as well which in turn sort of changes the layout so 
so if I add a white to it it just makes it look a bit clinical I can then add a, a warm white to it to give it a more sunnier look you might say and it enhances some of the foliage and I think it's going to be a handy thing to to use in conjunction with filming just to give a little bit more depth to the layout so the camera picks up some of the detail a bit better as there's probably more detail than you can see very easily on a camera generally but hopefully this will enhance the filming and make things look a, a little bit better on screen I had some of this realistic water left and I thought a lot of bridges especially stone bridges are always wet underneath they always have water running down the walls and damp and I just thought I'll try something and I got a pipette with some of this stuff in and I thought I'd run it down the brickwork or the stonework under the bridge so that's what I did and I must admit it did give it quite an interesting effect just this sort of perpetual wetness running down the walls probably wants to add me to add a bit of sort of mossy green to it like they're always sort of looking algae green but it's giving it that wet look that you often see down the stone book under a bridge so it wasn't a bad idea and I think it's possibly going to add something to it as it sort of glistens under the bridge possibly worth doing
doing open words as usual. <laughs> I have started using the scale model scenery, cantinery, catenary. <laughs> God, I keep getting that wrong all the time. I've gone and bought myself a panel, uh, not panel meter, a panel light, LED panel light. It's rather bright. I'm going to turn it down and uh, all well, I can see is stars now. But this will show up uh, my layout a bit better and probably show up all the imperfections in my modelling as well. I've been using scale model scenery. Um, oh, cool. Cantinery. Cantinery? No, there's no knife and forks. Um, Catenary. I don't want all the wires in the way of what I'm doing, so there won't be any catenary or cantinery or cutlery or knives and forks, as they all get in the way and I'll knock them flying probably. I've just worked out that I'm not wearing my mic, so all this is going to sound like I'm miles away. <laughs> <laughs>